Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Coming Distractions brought to you by the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with Carrie. Hey. All right, guys, we're back. This time we're going to review the newly released Thor Ragnarok. So Carrie and I saw this. Obviously, this is one of the two big um, comic book movies this, this season, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, this month, actually. Uh, this is obviously directed by uh, Taika Watiti. And this is the third Thor movie starring Chris Hemsworth, uh, Tom Hiddleston, Kate Blanchett, Idris Elba, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, Carl Urban, Mark Ruffalo, and Anthony Hopkins. Uh, and a lot of other people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, obviously the plot of this one is Ragnarok is coming, the end of all things, kind of, that's the general premise, right? And Thor is trying to stop that. Right. Pretty general story in the MCU. Um what did you think of this movie? Uh, easily the best Thor movie of the three by a long shot. Agreed. Um, but I think the surprise was that I think it's the best Marvel film of the year. Uh, what else came out this year from them? Spider-Man Homecoming. Mm. Guardians 2. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's a hard... I mean, it's not an insane thing to say that, actually. Right. Like, I... I I think I like my heart belongs to Spider Man just because, like, that one scene in that movie, I was yep. just like, oh, my emotions. Yeah. But yeah, it, it certainly makes a solid run for it. I, yeah. I can totally understand that argument. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's probably, yeah, you're probably right. Actually. I mean, I think what makes this really stand out, um, particularly from the other two Thor movies, is that it's just, it's fun. It's a yeah. fun movie. Like, I was smiling the whole time. Yeah. I'm um, sitting next to you. I, it, can <laughs> I mean, it, it has a really good, strong, emotional core to it, particularly yeah. as far as, like, the ongoing familial bullshit with yeah. Thor and Loki, especially, but particularly their relationship to Odin yeah. as well. Um, so, like, having that core is obviously really good. Um, but, yeah. you know... Comparing this to, like, Thor The Dark World, like, The Dark World, which I liked a lot, and I feel like in the grand scheme of things in the MCU, a lot of people would probably put that near the bottom. I would. Because <laughs> I don't remember almost anything about it. Um, it didn't stand out to me. You know, Thor in, in The Dark World especially, but even in the first one, is very stiff. Yes. Very stiff, straight lines, very serious. I am Thor Odinson, and this is my job, and I'm the right. god of thunder. Um, whereas in Ragnarok, they finally allow him to be the wacky frat boy in space that yes. he is in the comic books. Yeah. And, and, like, to me, I, and I, I agree with you 100%, to me, that's where the film really stands out. This idea of this, you know, globe-trotting or intergalactic-trotting <laughs> frat boy, like... He likes to have fun. He likes to like punch things and drink beer. Drink beer. Like, <laughs> there's a great scene with that. Uh, obviously, we won't, we won't talk spoilers, but like, they let him cut loose. Yeah. And not just in the comedy aspects, which Taika Waititi, the director, absolutely nails. Yes. Like, he super nails the comedy of it all. Um, but there are moments, there are like action beats where you literally see like, the everybody loved the sort of um the scene in the beginning of the first one where he's on um I forget the planet. Whatever uh, whatever, whatever it realm. is fighting the frost giants. Yeah, fight, fighting the frost giants. Where he was like literally cutting loose. Like he right. was just like kicking ass. You're like, hell yeah, this is awesome. But you never got that again no. in any of the other Thor movies or even in the rest of that movie, really. This one, they have a scene like that early on, but there's other scenes like that right. that happen, and it was just kind of fun. Um, what did you think of, so one of the big, obviously big reveals is that the Hulk is in this movie. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the Hulk and Mark Ruffalo, uh, this time? Cause you got to hear the I Hulk mean, speak I love, and everything else. Yeah. I love Mark Ruffalo as, as the Hulk, but I think this is the first time where, you know, we're finally getting like a clear distinction between Bruce Banner and the Hulk as like two entirely separate entities. Yeah. Because... Yeah, I would um, agree. you know, we we saw Hulk fly off in the Quinjet at the end of Age of Ultron, and it's like, okay, well, what has he been doing for the last few years? And yeah, um, we we learned that. I don't want to spoil anything too much about that subplot, but it's um, it's just it's really interesting um to see the sort of divide between Banner and the Hulk and how they 
treat Thor differently and whatnot. Right. And how but still th- kind of the same. Like <laughs> Right. And how Thor also treats that, them, right? And and you can legitimately say them because you're right. There is a clear line. This is the first time in a Marvel movie that I liked Hulk as a character. Yes. Right? Like before it was just like Hulk as a tank, go blow that shit up. And then it was like, oh, that was cool to see. But this and one And then he like, turns back into Banner at the end, whatever. Right. And this one he stays the Hulk. For a while. Yeah. Yeah. And so you actually get to appreciate the Hulk as a character, which is kind of cool. And because of the way he talks, he's almost kind of like a big dumb kid. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it was actually just really, it was really great. And and actually. He's, he's just like, he's the worst college roommate you ever had. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, dude, could you just calm down? He's like, it's like knocking shit over. Like, and I, I thought I thought he really stood out, obviously, as a separate character. Obviously, Banner stood out. Mark Ruffalo stood out really well as his own character. And, like, everybody was just on point. I thought Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie was great. She was the per Like, so you've got, like, big, goofy kid who can, like, you know, take on a giant wolf, you know, Hulk. Mm-hmm. You had Banner, who's just kind of, like... Holy shit, what the hell's going on around me? Like, I don't really know. Where am I? Why am I here? Why do you expect me to fly this alien spaceship? Right. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, And then, of course, you've got, you know, Thor, Thor. who's like the all rounder, goofy, happy go lucky. But also a tank in a lot of ways. Also a tank. And then, you know, Loki is very much a huge part of this film. Yeah, he was a lot bigger part of this film than I thought he would be, actually. And, you know, the funny thing is because Hiddleston said that this is his last movie in the MCU. I don't believe that for a goddamn second. I don't either and I think part of it is I and and Hemsworth had kind of made some comments like well you know after Infinity War I, I don't know. I It felt like they were having so much fun that they were like yeah, I think we come back for some. Their movies. banter off of each other has been good in previous films, it's but it's never been better than yeah. in this film. I, I feel like I feel like Taika Waititi is is to the Thor movies or the the Thor part of the universe uh-huh. that James Gunn is to Guardians. Yeah. Like I feel like it would be so hard to go back to someone else. Yeah. Like after having mm-hmm. him, you're just like. Oh, but he really got it. Like, yeah. He really nailed it. Um, and, you know, getting back to Tessa Thompson real quick, her her style, her character style in this movie is the straight, like she's the straight lays, hard backed kind of character. Yeah. Like, no, we got to do this because this makes sense and I'm not going to budge on that. But then she slowly kind of like eases into the comedy <laughs> parts, which are really good. She, it, a, a be- the best way to sort of uh, look at it is like how Gamora slowly kind of yeah. edges into mm-hmm. the into that part of the world in Guardians, right? Exactly Where she's that. really stiff in the beginning, but like her personality is stiff, not the actress by any means, right? Um, and she also gets to cut loose, like I mean, at the end, yeah, like, and it's fucking awesome, it's- <laughs> and it's super badass. Um, just quickly, Jeff Goldblum, Goldblum is so fucking good in this movie. <laughs> He's so goddamn good. Because, look, Jeff Goldblum isn't playing anybody. Jeff Goldblum is Jeff Goldblum in just different clothes. It's It's and Jeff Goldblum at his Jeff Goldblumiest. Yeah. Like, he's so good as the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster is such a good character. I really hope that we get to see more of him because the Grandmaster is the Collector's brother. Right. And I'm just like, please put... I need the two of them on screen. Jeff together. Goldblum on screen with Benicio Del Toro. I, I, like, I need them uh, to be on screen. They were, he was so good. But the, the, the best part about Goldblum's portrayal is that I can see Jeff Goldblum saying all of his lines just like on a Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> like, just like a normal day. Like, he has moments where I'm like, there's no way they wrote that for you. Right. No, you had to have ad-libbed that. No one knows you that good. Right. There's so there's a perfect. lot of little subtle things about his performance because he's, you know, the Grandmaster is very eccentric and flamboyant. Yeah, he's a little <laughs> sassy or whatever. He's got some moments that were just... Mm-hmm. Laugh out loud. Actually, every time he's on screen, it's, he's just hilarious. Yeah, it's really good. Um, I God. look. I I don't think we could say enough about Kate Blanchett as Hella. She, Ooh. she. Oh boy. <laughs> I would argue one. She looks super hot. Yo. Uh, <laughs> she just this did. this movie is a bisexual dreamscape because <laughs> it is. it's like everybody got, looks good in this movie. You've got Thor and Loki and like. I'm not mad about Jeff Goldblum in this movie. <laughs> okay. There and you then <laughs> and then you've got Tessa Thompson and Kate Blanchett. And I'm just yeah. like, Yeah. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I gotta tell you, 
I thought she was one. She looked great. Mm-hmm. Um, but her just her portrayal as Hella yes. was fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. She is the best villain they've had. I can go on record and say she is the best villain that they've had. I think in any Marvel movie. In Thor, easily. Well, in but, Thor, easily. But I, I think I put her right up there with Loki's portrayal. Like, I uh-huh. think it is damn good. Because, one, she's coming back in Infinity War, which is great. Um, I mean, that's not uh-huh. a spoiler. That, that's we been, know that. Yeah, we already know <laughs> that. But um, she was so goddamn good at this kind of like, what is wrong with, like, like, are you guys serious? Are you really going to take me on? Like, okay. I'm the goddess of death. Like, I can generate infinite weapons and throw all of them into your body forever. Yeah, like. And you're going gonna... to take me on. Yeah, she, okay. ha- she, she has a level of arrogance about her that is perfect. And, yes. and it's it's the same reason why Hiddleston was so good as Loki in that same mm-hmm. regard. Um, and she and she is she takes herself seriously, but she's got those, those like, couple of comedic moments, right? And she plays off of... Um, uh, Carl Urban's character, um, Scourge, Scourge, really well, because mm-hmm. Urban is really good always, and she has a couple of moments where she's just like, "Oh, do you want to like be something when you grow up?" <laughs> like, <laughs> like and, and it's just kind of it works really well. Their their dynamic. I do want to like talk about Scourge for a second because I feel like Carl Urban's portrayal is him because he is very much like he's in the movie a lot, but he's not like a big character. Yeah, he not. does have a couple significant moments, and I he feel does. like his. Like, his performance as Scourge is, like, very understated, but I thought it was perfect because he's a guy who's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, bend the knee to Hela here, um, but I'm not going to feel good about it. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to do it because I don't want to die, die <laughs> yeah. but I don't know if I'm cool with everything she wants to do. And you right. see that basically just in his facial expressions. You don't. Yeah. See, he, He's very yeah. apprehensive about what is happening. Yeah. And I actually, I appreciated that about yeah. him. Like, and not in that overly sympathetic villain sort of way. Like, not like, you know, like the Sandman from Spider-Man 3. Not like that. But right. in a way that is, like you said, a little bit more subtle. Yeah. And, they, and they worked at it really well. Um this is, you know, you you mentioned early on that um, you thought, you know, the dynamic between Thor, Loki, and Odin was uh, is, is is center stage in a lot of ways in yeah. this movie. It is like it's center stage, like in the way of like it is always looming sort of yes. over the film mm-hmm. and what happens, uh, and they have a couple of like pretty serious moments. I thought this, and I thought that was the strongest part of Thor one. I thought Kenneth yeah. Brown n- nailed that that sort of triangle dynamic. In a couple of ways, I think they got it better here because, like, the couple of moments where they're sort of channeling these connections between these three characters I thought was really powerful. Yeah. In, in the midst of, like, this goofball, like, fighting to get off this crazy planet. Right, right. yeah, because, like, yeah. you know, I, I feel like having that basically looming over the film, it helped to ground the film in a way that I wasn't really expecting it to. Right. Yeah, um I agree. So yeah, I just I think I think that it's it's good that they still continue to focus on this relationship, this very complicated, not always very healthy relationship between Thor and Loki and their own respective relationships with their parents. Right, exactly. Um, one last thing before we give our scores. Um, love the music in this. It was so Yo, good. <laughs> I listened to so they use you know, they use it in the trailer. They used Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. Right. Um, and they use it twice in this film, both to grand effect. Yeah. Um, that's my favorite Zeppelin song. Like, I love Led Zeppelin. <laughs> um, you know. As anyone who likes music should. Yes. Right. Um, and that's by far and away my favorite Zeppelin song. And I just, like, put it on Spotify <laughs> and put it on loop <laughs> the entire ride home. And I got... <laughs> it was just, like, you know, the whole... Because, you know, it's... It it's, amps up really It does. Well. It it really does. That's a great song. Yeah, um, and, and you're right. They use it twice, and it is to great effect. Yeah. It's like it works perfectly in those scenes. Um, yeah, all in all, man, it is easily one of their strongest films, period. Like, yeah. it is in the top tier of the Marvel movies. The I cannot thing, believe I'm saying that about a Thor movie, Right, the, the thing that I wanted to, to mention before we give our scores is this is the first one that feels connected to the rest of the Marvel universe. The I first agree. two I Thor agree movies... With that. Were very much on their own. You can take them by themselves, and you don't really need to have seen any. If other you've Marvel never, movies. if you've never seen Thor: The Dark World, it has literally zero effect on the rest of the MCU. Right. This or, one actually does. 
beyond just the Hulk, I mean, there's of course the the stuff with Doctor Strange, which doesn't have a profound impact on the story much, but the fact that he's there, you know, it it makes it feel more interconnected than yeah. really any of the other Thor movies. Yep, I agree. Uh, so your score out of five, five. It's a five mm-hmm. for me. It's a four and a half uh, out of five, and. I look, I loved it. I thought it was really, really excellent. It is a blast. It is funny as hell. The action beats are great. The serious moments when they come are good. They feel they feel right. It feels like you said, it it feels a part of the MCU without being like overly connected where it's not its own thing. Right. You know? Um and it gives it gives some steps into what comes next. Yes. Which is very fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, Thor Ragnarok out in theaters. Uh, when you listen to this, it's out in theaters today. Definitely go see it. I will definitely see this again. Yeah, it felt like a roller coaster. Like when it was done, I was like, oh, I want to go again. Yeah, like- <laughs> absolutely. It's a it's a blast from start to finish. Uh, Taika Waititi, you know, look, he nailed it. Came in. Also, we didn't we failed to mention he does the voice for Korg. Yeah, uh, which he's fucking great because he just uses his New Zealand accent <laughs> and it's just hilarious. A rock he, monster with a New Zealand accent. Like, he, he hey guys, man. hey man, hey man, hey man, <laughs> how are you? He was great. It was just so fucking funny. Um, All right. That's it for us. Uh, Make sure you go to comingdistractionspod.com to uh, subscribe uh, in any podcatcher that you listen to. Or you can catch the videos for these reviews on youtube.com slash thenerdpocalypse. And we will see you guys next time.